طيب جود افترنون اول اي ثينك ذا فويس از كلير فور اول اوف يو كان اني ون تاب اون ذا تكست ذا فويس از كلير اوكي ثانك يو فيرست اوف اول بيفور وي ستارت ريلي وي ار اول Uh, thank you all for active participation during uh, the last two days. And uh, as you know, today, inshallah, uh, the third day of the theoretical part of the surveillance course, uh, I want to announce something before, uh, before starting our today lecture is uh, tomorrow. Uh, it, it is a practical uh, session regarding the Hessen Plus system. how to uh, enter the data uh, into the Hessen system, how to use the form. You can uh, prepare your question regarding the system before tomorrow. And I advise uh, everyone uh, tomorrow to bring uh, the laptop and uh, try to practice what you will learn tomorrow from Dr. Faisal and uh, Ms. Yifon, inshallah. Uh, so very important to uh, bring your laptop. Your attendance tomorrow is very, very important for all of you. Uh, as you are uh, taking the theoretical part, you have to know the practical part, how to report through uh, Saha system, which is the Hassan Plus system, the new system that we have it at the GDIBC. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself. I am uh, your colleague, Muhammad Dahtani. Uh, I am general dentist having the infection control diploma and uh, currently preparing master degree in infection control. I working, uh, I am working with the GDIBC team in surveillance department uh, at the Ministry of Health. And today I will uh, introduce for you uh, the MDRO surveillance program, uh, MDRO surveillance uh, module. So we will discuss uh, the following content. We will go through uh, an introduction regarding uh, the, uh, the antimicrobial resistance or organism, also the effect of MDRO, and uh, the definition of uh, multi-drug resistance organism, also the MDRO isolate reporting, what are the inclusion and exclusion criteria, what are the duplicate MDRO isolate, what we mean by laboratory identified event, Also, we uh, take overview uh, regarding the MDRO in healthcare setting. We will discuss the factor contributing to uh, MDRO in the, in the healthcare setting. Also, what are the complications and consequences of uh, MDRO uh, high rate in our facility? Also, we will move to the presentation and the uh, source of MDRO in the healthcare setting. We will discuss. Uh, or present the MDRO transmission, presentation by symptoms, presentation by uh, the time onset. Uh, also, we will uh, take uh, a few uh, a few minutes in MDRO definition. We will learn what are the, the type of MDRO, what are uh, the different MDRO definition that we have to uh, follow to report through the system. Also, we will finish uh, the uh, our lecture today by the MDRO analysis knowing that what are the numerator data, what our denominator data, how we calculate the overall MDRO incidence rate uh, in our facility. So uh, we, will, uh, we will take a few minutes regarding the antimicrobial resistance as introduction. As we know, the antibiotic resistance is one of the uh, biggest public health worldwide. Uh, not only for uh, locally in Saudi Arabia, but it is uh, a biggest problem uh, worldwide as the antimicrobial resistance become uh, increased uh, these days. And also, uh, at the same time, the production of new antibiotics, as you all know, uh, is coming uh, on slowly process. Uh, even if there is uh, a new antibiotic, it is still under, uh, under uh, experiment. So this is a very big problem. From this point, uh, we have to uh, to make an active uh, surveillance program for tracking this type of infection, uh, what we mean the multi-drug resistance organism. Uh, keep in mind, anything you cannot measure, you cannot improve it. So we have first to apply an active surveillance to measure 
uh, and track this type of infection so we can make an improvement project or we can uh, improve our practice regarding this uh, MDRO. So uh, the, the ability as a definition for the antimicrobial resistance, the ability of microbe, mainly the bacteria to defeat uh, the drug designed to kill them. They can develop a mechanism of uh, resistance, uh, whatever this mechanism, uh, production of a specific enzyme to, uh, to uh, make a resistance or altering the target protein uh, inside the cell or by uh, different mechanism of resistance. So the ability of microbe, mainly the bacteria to uh, resist the antimicrobial. The infection, as we say, become more harder to treat because uh, the, the availability of new antibiotic is going slowly uh, these days. And the increase of uh, disease or uh, more illness even can lead to uh, death. Okay. What are the effects of MDRO? Multidrug resistance uh, can make up to 70% uh, of all healthcare associated infection due to microorganism resistance to one or more classes of antimicrobial. This also uh, a big problem, so we have to make an active uh, surveillance to track this type of infection as it represents more than 70% of our HAI inside our facility. So it is very important to uh, track this type of infection. Option for treating patient, as we mentioned, with HAI caused by MDRO are often extremely limited. According to a recent study in the United States, antimicrobial resistance is implicated in at least 2.8 million illness and more than 35,000 death in the United States each, each year. A multidrug resistance, as we say, predominantly bacteria resist to one or more classes of antimicrobial agent. Also, the name is uh, multidrug resistance, but sometimes there is bacteria that are resistant to only one agent, and we uh, also uh, call it multidrug resistance organism. Uh, for example, the methicillin resistance staphylococcus, this pathogen are frequently resistant to the most available antimicrobial agent. First thing we have to know today uh, regarding the reporting of MDRO, we have to know what are the inclusion criteria, we have to know what are the uh, exclusion criteria. So first thing, uh, we have to know any specimen obtained for clinical decision making testing positive for a multidrug resistance organism. This is very uh, important point. We have only take the specimen that are obtained for a clinical decision making and prescribed by the treating or uh, the treating team or the treating physician. So this is first thing I want from all of you uh, to know uh, about the multidrug resistance reporting. All the clinical culture, as we say, for the clinical management of the patient and those requested by the physician. All the specimen, like the blood, like the urine, like bronchoalphalophage, all the specimen uh, that uh, requested by the, the, the treating team or the treating physician, we have to report it uh, in the MDRO uh, surveillance. Uh, uh, for this time, we are applying the critical care unit only, intensive care unit, specimen only, this is the first phase of MDRO surveillance uh, in the GDIBC in the Ministry of Health. So inshallah in the future we will expand our project to uh, include all the department inside the facility. Uh, important also to know the exclusion criteria, this most frequently asked question regarding active surveillance testing and we will know in the uh, next slide what are mean by active surveillance testing. We are excluding any result come from uh, the active surveillance testing as this test is used for early identification and early isolation uh, of the newly admitted cases or routine screening of the uh, admitted patient. So any result from active surveillance testing or active surveillance culture, we exclude it from the MDRO surveillance. Also for this time, we are excluding the outpatient and inpatient rather than the ICU. 
So the active surveillance, we have to know, so we can uh, differentiate between the active surveillance testing and the NDRO surveillance. The active surveillance testing is for the purpose of surveillance that can refer to the testing that identify uh, and uh, early identify the uh, the presence or carriage status of the microorganism for uh, a patient for early isolation uh, and early uh, isolation uh, and uh, or discontinu discontinuation of the isolation precaution. For example, as we say, routine nasal swab for MRSA, uh, rectal swab stool culture for the fancomycin resistant enterococci. Or, or uh, the monitoring or eradic uh, eradication of the career state. Active surveillance testing, as we mentioned, we do not include it in MDRO surveillance. We only take the specimens that are requested by the physician or the treating team for the clinical management of the patient. Uh, second thing I want you all uh, to know about the MDRO uh, surveillance reporting. We have to know what mean by duplicate MDRO isolate. For uh, we have a different type of uh, specimen. So we have a blood specimen and other than blood specimen. So first we will take all the specimen other than the blood. What are the rule for deciding this is a duplicate MDRO? Duplicate MDRO mean repeated MDRO isolate for the same organism for the same patient for the same problem for for the same location. So we don't need to report the duplicate MDRO. Uh, MDRO isolate, we need to report the non-duplicate MDRO result. So for other specimen other than the blood, it is a rule for a 30 days, we have, uh, we don't report a duplicate MDRO uh, result during this 30 days. For the blood, it is a rule, it is a 14 days to decide this is a duplicate MDRO isolate or non-duplicate MDRO isolate. So if we have a specimen, other than the blood, for example, urine, for example, respiratory, for example, bronchoalphalalophage, we will look for the previous 30 days for the same patient, for the same organism, for the same location. If there is a positive culture for the same organism, same uh, patient during the last 30 days, we consider it a duplicate and we don't report it. If there is, if there is no a previous uh, positive culture, during the last 30 days, this is an unduplicate and we can report it through the Hessen Plus. For the blood specimen, at uh, uh, the same process, we look to the last 14 days. We will look if there is a positive blood culture for the same organism, for the same patient, for the same location. If there is no positive blood culture for the last 14 days, this is non-duplicate and we can report it. So it is a general rule any specimen other than the blood, we will follow 30 days rule. Any specimen that is blood, we follow a 14 days rule. This is regarding GCC guideline 2018 and the MOH HAI surveillance manual. Uh, for blood, as we say, we will look for last 14 days. If there is no previous positive blood culture for same organism, for the same patient, for the same location, we can consider it non-duplicate and we can report it. We don't need to report the duplicate or repeated MDRO isolate. Uh, what we say for this first positive blood culture for the patient uh, during the 14 days, we can call it a unique blood source. So the unique blood source, it is a non-duplicate uh, MDRO uh, result come from positive uh, blood culture for the same uh, for for the patient for, uh, for the patient from the same location. So we will look for the last 14 days if there is no positive blood culture for the same uh, microorganism or same patient, we can consider it a unique blood source and we can report it. Also, we will uh, know what are. Uh, mean by laboratory identified event. We mean all the non-duplicate MDRO isolate that we can report it through uh, the system from any specimen source and the unique blood source isolate. Laboratory identified event reporting option. 
allow laboratory testing data to be used without clinical evaluation of the patient. But as infection control, we have also to look for the presence of the sign on symptoms for the patient to decide uh, whatever this, this MDRO is uh, a true infection or uh, a colonization. Uh, as we know, this laboratory identified event is much less labor intensive method to track the multi-drug resistance organism. Also, we are tracking positive laboratory results that are obtained for clinical purpose, for clinical decision making for the patient. Any other specimen uh, not taken for the clinical management, like the active surveillance testing, we are excluded from uh, the MDRO surveillance. So we can consider the active surveillance testing as a tool for prevention uh, of the MDRO inside the healthcare facility, but we can uh, exclude uh, the result from the MDRO surveillance. This also uh, table, they can uh, explain more uh, for you uh, the reporting method and the non-duplicate isolate from the duplicate isolate. We will look for the first row. We can see first blood specimen uh, please concentrate. This is the same organism. We will look for 14 days. If we have uh, during the 14 days uh, other second specimen positive for the same organism for the same patient, we are not reported. If more than 14 days, so the blood specimen is a blood, so we can report it. So we apply the 14 days for the blood specimen. If the organism come uh, different organism or different MDRO, we can report it even within the 14 days. Why? Because it is a different organism, not the same MDRO for the same patient. If we have different organism for the blood specimen, during the 14 days, we can report it. And we can report it all the month. Right. For uh, other specimen other than the blood, for example, uh, urine specimen, bronchoalphalophage, or respiratory specimen, if we have the same organism, we will follow the 30 days rule. So during the 14 days, during 30 days, we not report the same organism for the same patient for the same organism. After the 30 days, we can report the same organism after 30 days. But if we have a different organism, we can report it uh, uh, during the 30 days period. So even if less than 14 days, more than 30 days, or even from 40, uh, 14 to 30 days. If the organism is different, we can report it any time. If the organism, same organism, we can follow the 30 days rule. It is very important also to know the factor that contributing to multi-drug resistance organism in the healthcare setting, uh, because we are aimed to communicate and we, we can collaborate with all the department inside the facility to uh, monitor this factor and uh, making improvement project to reduce this factor. Uh, first factor, the misuse or overuse of antimicrobial uh, prophylaxis or previous prolonged use of antibiotic course on the patient. This can lead to increased multi-drug resistance organism. Also, the increased use of poly antimicrobial therapy. We, uh, we see too much patients that are treated by a combination of too much antimicrobial therapy, this can lead to increase the MDRO uh, incidence in the healthcare facility. Also, the, uh, the, the administration of suboptimal doses of the antimicrobial, that, that can lead to uh, making the microbe develop a mechanism of resistance to this uh, antimicrobial. Also, the administration of antimicrobial for insufficient duration can lead to uh, increase the multi-drug resistance incidence in the healthcare uh, facility. Inappropriate choice of the drug to, uh, due to misdiagnosis of the case, la lack of microbiology lab information, lack of communication with the microbiology, this can lead to less information uh, to make uh, a wrong empirical treatment to start on the patient. Also, the poor uh, patient complies to taking the regimen of the antibiotic. Also, the lack of alternative appropriate antimicrobial, as we say, the process of production of a new antimicrobial this time 
is coming very slowly and the multi-drug resistance organism become uh, high in incidence. Also, the, the, the lack of clean water and sanitization, also the uh, water treatment system can, uh, if not working properly, can lead to uh, increase the multi-drug resistance organism as this water is used by the healthcare worker in different process. Also factor contributing to multi-drug resistance in a healthcare setting, the non-compliance uh, of infection control measure, even the environmental infection control measure, uh, the hand hygiene uh, compliance also can lead to uh, increase multi-drug resistance in the healthcare setting. Also some factor related to uh, the host itself, a severe underlying disease, compromise host defense like having under, uh, underlying medical or surgical condition, uh, the patient go, uh, undergo a recent surgery, indwelling medical devices like the central line or urinary catheter or even ventilator. This can make the risk for acquiring multi-drug resistance more risky. Also, the critical care patient, as we say, uh, because of the immunity of this uh, type of patient, uh, the chronic condition of the patient, uh, like the diabetes or hemodialysis treatment transfer from other uh, facility, also the transfer from other unit in the same healthcare facility. Also the presence of uh, infectious disease, all this factor related to the host can lead to increase the multi-drug resistance in, in the healthcare setting. Uh, also important to know what are the complications or consequences of a multi-drug resistance so we can communicate with the stockholder or to the leadership inside the facility about the, this complication to uh, to make uh, to, to attract them to participate actively in the uh, MDRO multi drug resistance organism prevention strategy. A multi drug resistance organism infection are associated with a prolonged stay in the hospital, increased morbidity and mor mor mortality. This can range from disability or decreased quality of life or even can lead to death, loss of limb, increased cost of laboratory diagnosis and treatment, more expensive medicine, more prescribed antimicrobial, more financial challenge for this impact. Uh, this one, uh, a quick review, I want uh, you all to participate in answering this. I uh, explained it in the previous slide. So I will open the chat to see the answer. What do you think for, uh, if we have first blood specimen, same organism within the 14 days, we will report it or not? Okay, no, no. I see one yes. Okay, more, most of you saying no, what is the right answer? No, because within 14 days, we follow the 14 days for the blood, blood specimen. Okay, what about this one, the second specimen come after the 14 days? We will re report or not? Okay, I see, mashallah. All the case, all the comment, yes, yes. Okay, the right answer is yes, uh, because we are following 14 days. After 14 days, we can report it, uh, even if the same organism. Okay, we will look to the second. Uh, the first is bad specimen during the 14 uh, days, but different organism. We report it or not? Okay, what about after 14 days? We report it also? Different organism? Yes, you are right, all. Different organism, we can report it at any time during uh, the 14 days period or even after. Okay, we will take the second uh, second question. We have for MDRO surveillance, we report the isolate that is a, isolate from active surveillance testing, B, for clinical decision-making, or for active 
certain assisting and the clinical decision making or regardless the reason. Okay, B, B. I see one A. What are the right answer? I see one C also. Okay, group B is the winner. Uh, absolutely for the clinical decision making, this is the right answer. Okay, we will move now for MDRO transmission. Uh, mainly the MDRO transmitted by contact transmission, even direct contact transmission like by the healthcare worker hands or by direct contact with uh, organism like in open wound, we can come in direct contact and they can possibly uh, transmit the multidrug resistance. For example, the MRSA and the vancomycin resistance enterococci and the gram negative bacteria. We have also other methods for transmission, the indirect contact transmission, like the transfer from contaminated environment or contaminated surface or contaminated uh, reusable medical uh, equipment. They can uh, compromise uh, the patient. So we can we have two methods of transmission, direct contact transmission or indirect contact transmission. Uh, now we will move for the, the presentation and the source of multi-drug resistance organism. Presentation, we have two presentations for multi-drug uh, resistance organism. Presentation by symptoms, we have what we say colonization, which is a symptomatic condition. Also the infection, which is symptomatic condition. The other presentation by the onset time, and we will learn how to decide uh, community onset organism or healthcare facility onset organism. The difference between the colonization and infection is very important to know. Colonization is the multiplication of microorganisms at the body site or any site without clinical presentation or clinical manifestation or detected immune reaction in, uh, in the host. They may be or uh, they may or may be not spread the microorganism to other. Colonization may be a form of a carrier state or a potential source of transmission usually. For colonization cases, we do not require treatment. The infection is on the opposite side. The successful transmission, there is infection by the microorganism, there is multiplication, there is clinical manifestation or presentation or subclinical uh, manifestation for the patient. So they can easily spread uh, the infection. Also, it is active source of transmission, usually require treatment. This is the main difference between colonization and infection. This is the presentation by symptoms. We will take also the presentation by the time onset. It is very easy. We will look to the date of the uh, facility admission for the patient and we will look for the date of a specimen collection. If the date of specimen collection during the first three days of admission to the facility, we consider it as a community onset uh, multi-drug resistance organism. Also, uh, the healthcare facility wants it. Any, uh, any specimen that are collected uh, after three days of admission, like for uh, on the fourth days or after. This is simply, it is important to know what are the community wants it, multi-drug resistance, and what are the healthcare facility wants it. We will look to the date of admission to the facility. We will look also, we will look also for the date of a specimen collection. If during the first three days of admission to the facility, this is community onset. If after the third days, like for example, on the fourth days or after, this is a healthcare facility onset multi-drug resistance organism. Now we will shift to the multi-drug resistance uh, organism definition. The type of multi-drug resistance organism, we have different types of multi-drug resistance organism. First, the methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus. Also, we have to know the methicillin susceptible or sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. And we will know why we are, uh, why it is important to know the methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. Also, the other type, the vancomycin resistance 
uh, enterococcus, enterococcus which include the enterococcus fecalis, enterococcus facium, or enterococcus unspecified species, cephalosporin uh, clepsilla, like uh, cephalosporin resistance clepsilla, clepsilla oxytica, clepsilla pneumonia, carbapenum resistance enterobacteria, which include uh, the E. coli or the clepsilla oxytica or the clepsilla pneumonia uh, and the clepsilla uh, origins or in the, uh, the enterobacter species. Also, we have the uh, multidrug resistance acinetobacter, which is any multidrug resistance uh, acinetobacter. Also, the multidrug resistance pseudomonas or clepsilla. We will discuss in detail the definition for each one of this type. Also, what uh, we have also what we call extended spectrum beta lactamase, which develop enzymes that are uh, inactivate the penicillin and cephalosporin drug, which include the E. coli, Clepsilla pneumonia, or Clepsilla exotica, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, or Proteus mirabilis. So we also have something, uh, as you all know, the Clostridium difficile is not really uh, resistance to drug, but because of uh, they are treated like the MDRO and they are transmitted by the same way uh, like the MDRO. Uh, so we can uh, we always uh, mention it by the multi drug resistance organism. We will take the first definition of the multi drug resistance organism definition. The methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus include Staphylococcus uh, aureus cultured from any specimen that test oxicillin resistance, cefoxetine resistance, or methicillin resistance by the standard susceptibility testing method. So it is any specimen that come by the microbiology report or by the, by the microbiology result come resistant to the exicillin or cefoxetine or the methicillin resistance. Uh, also, we have to know uh, the methicillin sensitive staphylococcus because of the prevention strategy for the methicillin resistant staphylococcus. We have to know the incidence uh, in our facility for the methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus and the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus, uh, Staphylococcus aureus. So, the prevention strategy, we need to know both of them. But for reporting in Hessen, we are reporting only the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. The, the third one is the vancomycin resistant enterococci, which include the enterococcus fecalis or enterococcus facium or enterococcus species that are unspecified that are resistant to the vancomycin by the standard susceptibility testing method. Uh, the, the fourth one is the cephalosporin resistance clepsilla, which include the clepsilla oxytica, clepsilla pneumonia, testing non susceptible resistance or intermediate to ciftazidine, mucifotaxin, ciftrexone, or cifibim. Carbaminum resistance uh, enterobacteria, which include uh, any E. coli, Clepsilla exotica, Clepsilla pneumonia, enterobacter species that are testing resistance to the amibinum or meribinum or duribinum or ertabinum by the standard susceptibility testing method. Also, we have another definition for the carbaminum resistance enterobacteria, which is the bacteria that have the production of carbaminumase. The uh, enzyme demonstrated using uh, a recognized test like the uh, BCR or the modified Hatch test. The MDR, uh, Acinetobacter, any Acinetobacter species, testing non susceptible, even resistance or intermediate to at least one agent in, the, uh, in at least three antimicrobial classes of the following six antimicrobial classes. So, so we have, uh, it should be uh, resistance or intermediate to at least one agent in the following uh, six classes. We have to resist one agent in three class of this six classes. We have beta-lactam classes, which include bibracillin with tazobactam, aminoj glycoside class, which include the amycacin, gentamicin, trobamycin, uh, carbabinums, uh, amibinum or meribinum or deribinum, Chloroquinolone, which include the ciprofloxacin or lefofloxacin, cephalosporin like cefabim or cefazidine, salbactam like the ambicillin with salbactam. So, 
we have to uh, resist to one agent to at least three antimicrobial classes of this six class. MDR Pseudomonas or MDR Clipsilla, uh, non susceptible ethan resistance or intermediate to at least one agent in at least three of this five antimicrobial class, al beta lactam, al amino glycoside, al carbabinums, al fluoroethylenol, al cephalosporin. We have to at least one agent in three class of this five classes. This also. Uh, a flow chart that can help you for reporting the uh, laboratory identified event for the purpose of multi drug resistance uh, reporting. We are follow this uh, flow chart. If we have for any specimen other than the blood, if it we will look to this specimen. If it is first specimen during the calendar month, during the 30 days, so we can report it as a laboratory identified event. This is non duplicate, so we can report it. If it is not the first during the 30 days, we are call it duplicate MDR also, we cannot report it. But if the uh, specimen type is a blood, we will look for uh, the 14 days. We will look here if the specimen is blood. We, if yes, we will look for the last 14 days. If there is no previous uh, positive blood culture for the same organism for the same location, uh, this is yes, so we can report it. Or uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is no. If there is no previous uh, positive blood culture for the same organism, same location, so we consider it as a lab event, unique blood source, we can report it. If there is a positive blood culture, same organism, so yes, this is duplicate, we cannot report it. This also, quick review regarding the reporting method for the MDRO. For example, here we have in 2 June a positive MRSA urine culture uh, for the location in uh, ICU. This we can consider it MDR or isolate because this is the first positive uh, MRSA culture for the same patient for the same location. So we can report it. And on in, in June, in June 10, there is other positive uh, MRSA from other specimen type, like for example, from infected uh, ulcer. We can consider it as a duplicate MDR or IZ, so we cannot report it. Why? Because it is during the 30 days. But if the blood, uh, if the specimen was blood, we will follow the rule of 14 days. For example, here, 1st of July, there is positive MRSA blood culture. We can consider it as a unique blood source. So this is non duplicate MDR or result, so we can report it. On 4th of July, there is other positive MRSA blood culture. So this is duplicate uh, isolate. So we cannot report it because it happened during the 14 days. Uh, we have also on July 16, there is positive blood culture. But if we look, this is 16 July. It is 14 days from the 1st July. But also we can consider it duplicate uh, result why because we are looking for the last positive culture in the last 14 days for the patient so for example here in july 31 and there is 14 days uh, to the 16th of july so we can consider it as a unique blood source so we can report it we don't look for the first positive blood culture we look to the last positive blood culture during the last 14 days Uh, reporting method, we, uh, we will uh, also uh, know what are the reporting method for MDRO. We have something called, uh, something called core modules and supplemental modules. The core module we are following at the DDIDC at the first phase for MDRO reporting, which is the laboratory identified event. We have also uh, preparing for other module regarding this uh, carceridal deficits. Also, we have a module regarding the infection surveillance, and we are now trying to uh, make it automatically matched with laboratory identified event when you're using the HESAN system. Also, we have the supplemental module, which include the prevention process, which we are uh, always do in, inside the hospital, like the hand hygiene, and compliance to BBE, active surveillance system, which was, which was required by the outbreak program. 
Also, uh, the active surveillance testing outcome measure, the prevalent cases or incident cases for the active surveillance testing. So we follow uh, for this time the laboratory identified event as a first phase for GDIBC reporting of multi-drug resistance organism. We have different methods for uh, reporting multi-drug resistance. We have what we call facility-wide bilocation. What we have also uh, selected one or more as we do uh, this time. Uh, we select all the intensive care unit as a location for reporting the multi-drug resistance. Also, we have offer all facility-wide method. Also, we can take only the blood specimen for the overall facility-wide uh, reporting method. Facility-wide uh, reporting method by location. This reporting method uh, requires the most effort, but it will give us the most detail for local or national statistical data. Report for each location separately and uh, cover all location in the facility. So we can report all the, uh, collect all the events from all the location and collect the denominator separately from each location and we calculate the rate for each location. This requires a more human resources, a more effort, but it, it will uh, provide the most detail for local and national statistical data regarding the multi-drug resistance organism. Uh, what we do now for uh, the GDIBC plan for phase one, uh, we are uh, selecting uh, the intensive care units selected one or more, report separately from one or more specific location with, within the facility. This reporting method is ideal for use uh, during the target prevention program, like, like what we uh, do in our surveillance program. We are targeting specific location like the intensive care unit. Also, uh, we are including all the critical care units, like for example, adult uh, intensive care unit, pediatric, or even the neonatal intensive care unit for choosing for the first phase for the GDIBC reporting method. We have also the overall facility-wide uh, for laboratory identified event only, reporting the individual event from each location separately, and we aggregate the denominator uh, for all the uh, location together. Overall, facility-wide by blood specimen, same like the previous, but we are taking only the blood specimen from all locations separately. Then we uh, collect the denominator data from the all uh, location inside the facility. This is repeated, uh, uh, what we mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, laboratory identified event, include all the non-duplicate, and we know what are the non-duplicate in the RO isolate from any specimen source and unique blood source. Allow laboratory testing data to be used without clinical evaluation of the patient, but we have as infection control uh, to evaluate the patient uh, for the presence of uh, signs symptoms to decide which uh, this multi-drug resistance organism is a colonization or infection. Uh, only the positive laboratory results that are obtained for clinical uh, decision making, we are included in our MDRO reporting methodology. This also we explain what we mean by community onset and healthcare uh, facility onset. Simply, we will look to the date of specimen collection and the date of admission to the facility. If the date of specimen collection during the first three days of admission, we consider it as a community onset uh, multi drug resistance organism. If it happened at uh, the fourth day or after, this is healthcare facility onset multi-drug resistance organism. Al infection surveillance reporting. Also, we are tracking the infection uh, surveillance, uh, like uh, what we are utilizing the HEI definition, like uh, the CLABSI or CAUTI or uh, the FAA uh, associated with the multi-drug resistance organism. This uh, we are now trying by the system to be uh, matched automatically with the uh, multi-drug resistance organism module. Uh, infection surveillance can occur in any inpatient location where such infection may be identified. 
like what we uh, say, CLABSI or CAUTI or FAE, and where the denominator data can be uh, collected from uh, the specific location. Surveillance for all type of HEI within DRO selected for monitoring in at least one uh, location in the healthcare facility. Also, we are excluding the active surveillance culture or active surveillance testing result to be included in the reporting of a multi-drug resistance. Finally, we will know the NDRO uh, analysis, how to uh, calculate the NDRO laboratory identified uh, event rate. Uh, first, we have to know what are uh, our numerator data. Our numerator data, it is all the positive laboratory identified event, which is all non-duplicate MDRO isolate from any specimen and from the unique blood source. Denominator data, it, it is uh, the patient days, and you all know how to calculate uh, the patient days or how to count the patient days for uh, the ICU. Simply, we will use the formula defining uh, the number of multi-drug resistance organisms, all the organisms together. We can say this is the overall multi-drug resistance organism incidence rate in the facility, defining on the patient days and multiply uh, this number by 1,000. Also, we can uh, stratify the incidence rate by the infection type. As we say, the, uh, we are trying to uh, make it automatically match it by the system through the uh, HESN system by the infection type like CLABSI or uh, ventilator associated event or CAUTI or even uh, surgical site infection. Also, we can stratify the rate by the type of multi drug resistance organism. Uh, like uh, to know what are the rate for the MRSA, the Phancomycin resistance uh, enterococcus, or the uh, uh, CRE. Also, we can stratify by the location. We can calculate the facility-wide rate or by specific location. Uh, this is the last slide, and.